Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and welcome to conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson we're going to talk about assessing infrastructure requirements and it's really important that once you've finished your site survey you know where your access points are going to go, you know what antennas you're going to use, is that you think about what do I need on the infrastructure? Do my switches need to be upgraded? Do I need any appliances in the network in order to make sure that I'm delivering the required customer functionality over the wireless links? So that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. So we're going to start off with a discussion about your final site survey report. We'll talk about what's going to be in that report and we're going to take a look at the Cisco wireless control system and whether you want to use that as a tool to generate your final site survey report. And indeed I'm going to do a demonstration that actually shows you how you can generate a report using that wireless control system. Once we've done that, then I'm very excited because then we're going to go through an infrastructure checklist and this will be very helpful for you to remember things to make sure that your infrastructure is going to be ready to deploy that wireless network. So we've got an infrastructure checklist for you. We're going to talk about some installation questions and then I'm going to take you through the portfolio of the Cisco wireless LAN controllers. Now there may be a need for you also to deploy some wireless appliances and Cisco provide a set of different appliances to support a deployment of a wireless network. Some of them are on the security side but in this lesson the ones I want to talk about is the mobile service engine, the MSE. So we're going to wrap up this lesson with a discussion on that. So let's begin with a discussion on the site survey report. So let's talk about what should be in the site survey report. Um, I always start with a description of the facility where I've actually done the site survey. I'll talk about the buildings, the floors, etc. And again, you want to list exactly where the sites are that you've been surveying, where the sites are that you'll be deploying equipment. Always good to put in the survey report what the customer's needs are. So you've collected that right at the beginning and just stated here, is this a voice network, is it a data network, etc. Then you want to put in the recommended equipment and you want to be as detailed as you can. You want to talk about what the access point equipment is and where they should be located. You want to talk about the antennas that you're using and if you're using external antennas, which direction should they be placed in. You want to give a very detailed description of the network cabling that you'll be using to connect the access point. The mounting requirements, very important here as well, like are you attaching it to a ceiling, to a wall, uh, above the ceiling, what mounting equipment do you actually want. We're going to talk more about infrastructure requirements in a moment, but you'd also put in all of your infrastructure requirements, any switch upgrades, etc. If you are expanding an existing network, you need to look at upgrading your licensing, potentially on your wireless LAN controllers, your Cisco appliances, etc. Or maybe it's a brand new installation and you need to look at licensing in general to make sure you have enough licenses to support all of the access points that you want to deploy. Then I always like to put in an information about the tools that I use when conducting the site survey and a description of the methods that I've used. And again, I think that customers find this very informative. It also gives a very professional feeling to the report itself. Then implementation details, again showing diagrams where exactly the access point is and think about this from the implementation engineering perspective. So someone's going to take these diagrams and they're going to use them to say okay here's where the access point should be, here's how the antenna should be directed. And then 
what kind of findings you found and what kind of recommendations that you're going to make. So, for instance, you might say you found certain interfering sources, and so in this location, maybe you want to avoid interference with microwave ovens, and you may say I'm recommending usage of these channels, etc., in these regions. So you want to talk about your findings and your recommendations, and again, those are very site-specific, and they may differ between different buildings and different floors where you're making your recommendations. I personally find that the report is much better received if I include a lot of diagrams and also photos as well. I find that the customer feels it's much more professional and it really helps the installation engineer that's going to be using this report. So one of the things that you can do is you can use the Cisco wireless control system to actually generate a site survey report. And how you can do that is you can bring in a site plan, you can place your access points on that site plan, and you can actually generate from that performance and coverage estimates. Now bear in mind at this point you've already done your layer 2 site survey so you already know where you're going to place your access points. So you can open this tool up in planning mode, generate the access points but then move them to the precise locations where you're making a recommendation. And of course you can upgrade it and change the antennas, etc., on the Pacific access points. So say, for instance, you're going to put an access point in a corner and you want to change that antenna, you can go into this tool and change the antenna for that Pacific access point and then generate some of the performance and the coverage maps based on your design. Now, again, here, our goal for the report is really to illustrate where the access points are going, not so much to plan out the network, but you can generate those heat maps and they do actually provide quite a bit of value when you're doing your end of summary report for your customer. So if we look at the wireless control system and just talk about the layout of this tool, you can see here there's a menu bar and this is on every window and it has monitor, report, configure, location, administration and then help. You can see here I'm actually showing the home slide and if you go into the home you'll see the default tabs general, client, security and mesh. Depending on which of the menu bar options you chose you will have a different series of default tabs. On the side you'll see a sidebar area. Now if you choose the new configuration underneath the menu bar, then the sidebar will display the configuration data of your wireless network. So depending again of which option you're in, the sidebar will have different types of information in it. And then the wireless control system, because of course it is a management control system, has an alarm dashboard. Now we don't need to look at that for generating a site survey report, but you should be familiar with it just in general with the tool. When you're running and managing your network, it will have that dashboard to help you find errors and problems in the network. Now for our site survey, what we want to do is we want to add some maps and to place our access points. And you can add maps in different formats. Here I've listed the four formats that are available. And when you bring in your maps, you will define what types they are. You know, is this a campus? And a campus then would consist of multiple buildings. And so you can bring in a campus map and then add buildings to that map and outdoor areas. And then if you've got a building, then you can add floor areas within the building. So you can literally build a portfolio of maps which can be used both in the site survey report but also as ongoing management of your wireless system once you've deployed it. And once you've loaded up your maps, you'll want to go into the map editor. And a map editor, you can define some walls and some other obstructions. 
Now, as I mentioned, you can run the planning mode, which will predict where the access point should go, depending on the type of deployment you're doing, whether it's data, voice, both, the location, etc. You can generate it, and then you can move these access points around, as I mentioned before, and you can change the antennas to match with your site survey layer 2 results. And so from this, then, you can place the access points in the various building locations, you've now got those pictures. You can generate the heat maps as well, which can also really facilitate the site plan. So here's a little bit more detail when you go into the planning mode. I always select uh, Add APs automatically. Um, this is the easiest one because <laughs> then it just generates them. You put in the type of access points and antennas that you're predominantly using. And then I'll just go in and move them around and change the antennas where I maybe have used some exceptions to use an external antenna. Now, what you've got all of your access points in there and you're comfortable that you now have pictures of the site plan, pictures of where your access points and your antennas are, now you can go in and actually generate a report. Now, the report launch pad is kind of like the hub where you'll generate all of the available reports in this wireless control system. And you can specify the type of report or create new reports. And then you can save the reports as well for the future. Now, of course, the report that we want to generate at this time is our site survey report. And so we're going to take a look at a demonstration now of exactly how I do that. So in this demo, I want to show you the reports that you can generate from the Cisco wireless control system. So remember in an earlier lesson, we put in a floor plan, we built walls, and then we did a prediction on where to place the access points. So I'm going to go back to that plan. So I'm going to come in here to the wireless control system and click the planning mode button. That brings me back to that map. And just to remind you, I'm just going to click on one of these access points. You can see here that I generated this coverage map using the 3500i access points that they've got internal antennas. Um, also notice the power levels here that I had them generated at. And personally, if I was doing a plan, I wouldn't have them on the maximum power because I always think that for a deployment, you want them slightly below that. So if you get an issue, you've always got the option to raise the power up a little bit. I also generated this in both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. And it also is covering voice and data because I've got six access points in this area. Now, notice up here, I've got this option here to generate a proposal. So that's what I want to show you in this demo. So here you can see it's giving me the option. Do I want to generate this just for the 5 gigahertz band or the 2.4 or both? I'm going to select both because I want to see all the report. And here you can start to see now, it starts with the details, what I entered. So I'm planning the fifth floor in building A. And it's showing me the floor plan. And then beneath that, it has some assumptions that I've made. So it talks a little bit about VoIP phones, talks a little bit about coverage and also the client throughput. It explains